to talk about chi-squared, which is the confidence uh, interval and the hypothesis testing for our um, standard deviation. And we looked at chi-squared in Chapter 7 when you did the confidence intervals, and that was the last, maybe the two last questions on your Chapter 7 lab. Chi-squared, the intervals could not be done in the calculator unless you downloaded the program that came along with the textbook. I can't help you with that. I, have, I haven't used it. I've never downloaded it. I've never tried it. But if you want to follow the directions in the textbook and use it, that's fine. I'm sure it also does the hypothesis testing uh, in that program. Again, I haven't used it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one from example from the textbook by hand. Of course, there's other examples in the textbook that you can look at also in 8.6. Uh, and then you're going to have to do three of these on your Chapter 8 lab. Your Chapter 8 lab is actually taken from a book, uh, which I actually never finished, Rainbow Six. Apparently, at one point in the book, they're doing some testing, and they go into like the border of uh, New York and New Jersey, and they gather up some homeless people, and they spray them down with Ebola. And some people get a vaccine, and some people don't. And they wait, and they wait to see what happens. So people that got vaccine A, this is how long it took them to display the symptoms. Apparently vaccine B worked because they didn't display any. And here's our control group, people who had no vaccine, and uh, they just showed symptoms then. And what you're going to do is you're going to run some t-tests, and you're going to run some chi-square tests, uh, and make some predictions and, and, and play some hypotheses about what you think is going to happen and how long it's going to take for people to do uh, show symptoms. But we'll get to the, back to that in a moment. For now, let's just do one that's a little bit more straightforward. This is number 12 from your textbook, 8.6. 40 people using Weight Watchers for one year. They showed a loss standard deviation of 4.9. Um, so that is our S of X, 4.9. N is 40. So you know that that must mean that DF is 39. And we want to use a 0.01 significance to test the claim the amount of weight loss have a standard deviation equal to 6 pounds. So what we're claiming is what's going on with our population is that people all over the world that use it will have a standard deviation of six pounds. That's our claim. And so the opposite, of course, of that claim is that it's not six pounds. Here's my null. Here's my alternate. So that part doesn't change at all. The part that does change is that I cannot use the calculator to run the test for me. I must find the test stat by hand. The other thing that's always a little weird with chi is that it's not really symmetric, although I always draw it symmetric just to make my life easier. And the chart that we're going to have to use to find these critical values runs backwards. So we're using a 0.01 significance, which means my green zone in here is a 0.99, right? And on the ends, I have 0 0.005 because I have a two-tailed test. And what I need to do, basically, is find these critical values that set up these bars that say I'm in between here. So I'm going to need my chi chart that you could came with your textbook. I'm looking for my page. And here's my table. Degrees of freedom is 39. I'm going to make it smaller so I can try to get it all on one page. Of course, it's going to be impossible to see. All right, so I don't have a DF of 39 here. You see how it goes up to 40? So we're just going to go ahead and use 40. Technically, it's a 39, but 40 is going to be close enough that we'll be able to get what we need. We're going to have to find both ends, both cutoffs. Now, our tail this way has an area to the right, because remember this, run back, this runs backwards, of 0.995. So I'm going to go over here and say 0.995, go down to the 40, and it's 20.707. That is the cutoff that would have an area of the right of 0.995. My other cutoff, 
cutoff has an area of right of 0 0.005. Again, degrees of freedom I'm going to use is a 40. Over here, 66.766. If I had a calculator to do this for me, my numbers would be a little bit different, but that's okay. It's going to be close enough for our cutoff. So if I get a chi-square value, a test stat, that lands in between those two numbers, I'll be in the green zone, and I get to then uh, fail to reject. If it's bigger than that or smaller than the 20, then I'm going to reject. So let's go ahead and find out what our chi-square test is. The formula is n minus 1 times our sample standard deviation squared over what we believe is going on with our population standard deviation. So DF, now even though we use the 40 cutoff, we'll go ahead and still use the 39 in here. Our sample standard deviation was a 4.9. We need to square that over the 6 squared. Mm, calculator. Okay. So I have a 39 times 4.9 squared divided by 36, right? 6 squared. So divide by 36, 26.01. 0 0.01, I think, right? So we are like right here. So that means we are in the green zone. We fail to reject. Which is good news for us because we wanted to keep that. There is insufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim, I believe is the wording. The wording is a little strange. Let's let's use our chart to help us with the wording. And here it is. Oops, too far. Did the original claim have the equality? Yes. Did we reject? No. So there is not sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim. Very sounds very negative. Most people would just be like, yeah, well, we're right. Instead, we say we failed to be wrong. So there's not sufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim because we were going to keep that, that value. Um, so now let's look at another example on the project. So here's my project, and you can see that I did, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller, hopefully, so we can kind of see more of it at the same time. If you have your values, uh, the actual data, so you're going to have to run the stat. So I'm going to do both, I'm going to talk you through both of them, not just the, the chi-square. I'm going to, with a 0.025 level of significance, which I think actually I changed in uh, what I actually calculated to a 0.05, um, that my vaccine group A, they're going to, in more, it'll take them more than 30 days to show symptoms. So my claim is that mu is going to be greater than 30, so the opposite of that is less than or equal to 30. I'm going to need to, for all of these, put these values into stat edit and run my run vars so that I can get mu, so I can get the S of X for both of them. Now, granted, with a chi, you're not going to need the, the, um, average, but you'll need that S of X. So I run S of X, apparently I got a 13.3. I changed my uh, significance level, or maybe I just left out the two, to a 0.05, and I have a right-tailed test. This is a t-test, so this is something I can do in my calculator. I plug that all in there. I get 0 0.006, less than both of them, so quite honestly, the level of significance really had no bearing on anything whatsoever. Either way, the P is very low, so the null goes. That's good news for me. I reject the null, which means there's not sufficient evidence that it will be displayed in less than 30 days. So there's not, or there's sufficient evidence to support my claim. Uh, however you word it is fine by me, whether it's good or positive or negative. So now let's look at Kai. Same situation, I'm still talking about vaccine group A, and I'm saying it's going to take them at least seven days to display symptoms. So seven or more days. And so that's really my claim, and since that has the equal sign, that's going to be the null. So I know it's worded a little strange. Yours are a little more straightforward. The opposite of greater than or equal to is less than. So I have a left-tailed test. I had five numbers in my data set, so degrees of freedom is four. 
I am using a 0.05, uh, level of significance is 0.025. So what I'm looking for, I'm just going to sketch it real quick on here, possibly. If I have a left tail test of 0 0.025, that means I got 0 0.75 this way. So I would go to degrees of freedom, 4. On the chi-squared chart. And the area of the right is 0.975. So my cutoff value is that 0.484. 0.484 right here that guy so if I have anything bigger than that I'm going to be in the green zone less than that I'll be in the red zone red zone I reject the null so I got to find the test stat so I dig up the test stat I plug that all in instead of using a 13.3 I used a 13.29 I squared that my claim is 7 square that I get about a 14.42 which is way out here so I'm in the green zone. So I fail to reject the null, which is good news because that was my claim. So there is insufficient evidence to warrant the rejection of the claim, which means it's going to take them at least seven days to show symptoms. It's not going to be five days or four days, uh, which is really bad news. It means you're sick or sick for a much longer time. Uh, by the time you find out, you're you're pretty sick. So now, what you're going to do is do this for the control group. You're going to put 61, 39, 55 in. You're going to get your X bar. You're going to get your mu uh, and your S of X. And you're going to go through the test with a 0.05 level significance. So, so what I'm going to do, though, is I would like to do one of them with you slash for you for the chi. You should know T-test shouldn't be a problem. I know the chi is strange. So I'm going to go stat, edit, and I'm going to put in L1 my value, 61, 39, 55. So these are the people that had no vaccine. We just sprayed them with Ebola and <laughs> ran, apparently. And I'm going to run one virus, and I need this in here, this 11.37. That's what I need. For your T-test, you'll need that 51.67. My claim is that it's going to take seven days for them to show symptoms. So the opposite of that is not seven. And you can either say not equal to seven, or you can say insert symbol not equal to. Either way is fine. My puppy is impatient. So what kind of test do I have? I'm going to have a two-tailed test. And my degrees of freedom is 2. And so I have something that looks like this now. My significance level was a 0 0.05, so I have a 0 0.95 in here, and 0 0.025 on both ends. OK, Holly, let me go take care of Holly. Okay, so now we need to know what these cutoffs are. We're going to go to our table, and degrees of freedom is 2. Area to the right was 0.975, yes. So 0 0.051, and then the area to the right on this one is just a 0 0.025, degrees of freedom 2. Right here, 7.378. 7.378. Okay. So now I need to find my test score. My chi is going to be equal to my degrees of freedom times my standard deviation squared, which was 11.37. And that will be divided by my claim squared, which is going to be a 49. So I'm going to plug this in my calculator. Now you can write this out or just write down what you get. Either way is fine. 
times 2 divided by 49. I get 5.3-ish. 5.3 is definitely in here. So I'm in the green zone again. Green zone says fail to reject the null. Now I put the symbols in so you can either highlight what you want or take out what you don't need. So I failed to reject the null. That is good news for me. There is sufficient evidence to support my claim that it will take seven days to show symptoms of the Ebola virus. So one person might be seven day uh, or show symptoms at 14, the other one might be 21, the one, you know, so there will be differences of about, about seven days. And so you now you have two examples specifically for the test, for the, for the lab, and then one from the book. And then of course you can read through the textbook. If you have not read through the textbook at this point, it's actually a pretty, pretty good textbook uh, that's fairly readable um, and if they have want to practice some of the questions at the end you can of course do that too and that is how you're going to work through your chi values for your chapter 8 lab.